Welcome back to Life with the Spectrum. I'm your host, Gina Cavalli. And the last time we were here, we mentioned that we would be bringing on some very special guests. Mm -hmm. We're not doctors. We're not experts. We are moms that are living life with the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And there might be something that you can learn from this, take away from this, or maybe there's something you want to share uh, during this process and this journey. Remember, you can always comment below, DM me, look for us on socials, Life with the Spectrum. I want to introduce a dear friend of mine, Miss Mia Anderton, who, Mia, we go back now. Too many years. Too many years. It's when, embarrassing. When we were 29 we again. Oh, yeah, 29. <laughs> uh, but a little backstory. Mia is a well-regarded journalist and news reporter. Uh, we met in Wilmington, North Carolina, where mm. I was running a radio station, and the rest is history. Kids mm -hmm. later, uh, Mia, yes. you have three, I have one. Right. It's a busy life. Yes, we found a way to stay in contact all these years, usually talking about our kids. Yes. And finding the similarities and um, things that maybe I'd gone through that you were just starting to go through. And so that leads us to why it was so important to talk to you, because um, one of your sons goes through something that, my son does not. Mm. Again, living life with the spectrum can look very different Absolutely. amongst children. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you wouldn't mind letting everyone know what that something different is. All right. So today we're here to talk about auditory processing disorder and delays. And uh, so one of my three sons suffers with auditory processing disorder. And basically how our brains work is we have a file cabinet and we have a different word for every in every file cabinet. And when you hear that word, it's got to translate to something. Right. And so we go into our brains, open it up, and pull out that image of that word. So sometimes that process takes longer for, for some people than, than it does for others. And so kids with auditory processing disorder simply just need a little extra time. And as a mom, we might not always give our kids that time that they need because we might not even recognize that that's what it is that's going on. I notice for, and it doesn't even have to deal with auditory processing, sometimes we actually speak for our children instead of giving our children that extra time Yep. because that's really what they need, auditory mm -hmm. processing or not. All children on the spectrum need a chance to answer, but yes. we're so quick to do it we're for so them. We're so quick, and we're we're trying to sometimes rescue them, or sometimes we're impatient to either. To wait. Yeah. But regardless, we need to just take a breath. And um, I tell myself, my children, my spouse, um, my child's teachers, to please give him ten seconds to reply. I, I literally email every teacher at the beginning of the year and say, "Ask a question, and then count to ten. Um, because otherwise, we're we're not giving them that opportunity for their brains to do that digging, which is going to strengthen their brain when they do that digging to get it out. So um, we need was to give them through, time. Was that through therapy that you learned that? Like, what yes. kind of therapies? Because with mm -hmm. early intervention, you know, OT, speech, um, what what kinds of therapies do you do for auditory processing? You know, both speech and occupational therapy. Okay. Uh, yeah, both both of those. Um, so speech is going to help with a child with learning how to um, express themselves more. Sure. And a lot of times kids that suffer from auditory processing disorder also suffer from expressive language disorder. Um, auditory processing could also be called receptive language disorder. So you've got your receptive language disorder and your expressive language disorder. Both of them oftentimes go into hand in hand but they don't always. Okay. Um, but if they do go hand in hand, then you want to be able to strengthen their expressive language as well um, and their language overall. So there are several different ways that we can help a child at home um, develop all of their language skills. Now, I know that you had come out, uh, we used to live in Colorado. Hey, Colorado friends that are watching and, and part of this journey. Um, we used to live in Colorado, and I remember you bringing your son to Colorado. What was that organization like, and did it help? Is it for everybody with auditory processing? Right, so there's an organization in Colorado, Spr Colorado Springs, or close Denver, by it, yeah. um, that is called the Able Ear Foundation, and they develop a plastic device that is designed specifically to the inner ear of your child and it fits in the ear and it helps actually delay the sound which is probably counter for what you'd expect but um, 
if the sounds come in fast in one ear and slower in the other, then it ends up going like this and um, in, in their brains, which is where they're processing it. Whereas if you can make the speed the same, then they're going to come in and switch and cross uh, from the left hemisphere into the right hemisphere and vice versa at the same time and bounce back and forth. And that's what the sound needs to be. So um, they develop a piece for the ear and some people have found great success for it. Okay. And there are reviews on it. Some people haven't and some people have. Uh, for us, it wasn't, uh, didn't seem to be helping a whole lot. But. Do you think there are other things? Uh, I know that we were talking about the metronome, yes. and it was not the metronome that you're used to getting on, on the Amazon yeah. <laughs> for the piano, <laughs> but rather a, yes. a beat. Can, can, like, mm -hmm. can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, kids have to go through, when they do the metronome therapy, uh, they have to do it for a long enough time, and if they don't do it for a long enough time, it doesn't even work at all. So oh. when you're in it, you got it. You don't want to just try it for a week. You, you got to be you have committed. To sign up and you have to be committed. Um, and it's um, a therapy in which a child has either a uh, pedal to stomp on or a kind of like a cassonette that they can touch with their fingers. And they try to do this along to the beat that's provided to them by the therapist. And the therapist can measure their responses. Um, and it gets down to like one one hundredth of a second. Wow. Really specific like, minuscule. things that they're looking for. And um, there are many, many professionals that believe that that is the best right. therapy that we have for auditory processing disorder, at least from what I've understood. Um, then, then there's also working with an audiologist in their, um, in the, in the like doctor's office um, we and, were we were mentioning off camera um, how important reading is. I know that um, last week I, uh, I told you that Lyric was reading by the age of two um, through early intervention programs mm -hmm. and putting that speech and language together. He was getting the words, you know, bah, at, at mm -hmm. and, and all of these mm -hmm. things so that we could develop those speech skills. Mm -hmm. And I know that ABC Mouse ended up being a big mm -hmm. one for us because uh -huh. it made it very fun and interactive yes. ways to learn uh, both you know, with math, but more on the reading mm -hmm. aspect and pronouncing words. Mm -hmm. And then they moved into um, another app that you were mentioning right. that maybe if you have an older child um, right. that you might want to look into. Yes. So for older children, um, there's an app called Learning Alley, and it's brand new for just, you know, everyday parents like us. Uh, it used to only be available to professionals. And so now it's available to us hundred dollars a year. Love, that's it's, okay. It's kind of expensive, but yeah. It's Actually worth cheaper it. than most therapies yes. out there. <laughs> right. It's like a half hour of therapy. So uh, basically it's an app that reads to the child, but it has a highlighter that tracks the words. And what this does is allows a child to kind of passively um, read and take in how a word sounds as at the same time that they're looking at what it looks like. And it really helped my child's reading yeah. because it, it was just a more fun way. And they get to kind of read a book and get into a book without having to have that, that barrier of the, of the burden of not wanting to do it. And I would it think really it would help on several layers mm -hmm. too, like with, overall the reading of the word mm -hmm. the translation how it's pronounced uh, how the it's comprehension pronounced, yes. and then all of that if you had auditory processing difficulties then that would certainly help you what's the name of that app learning alley learning alley look for it a hundred bucks a year is a small price to pay right. if you're dealing with auditory processing right difficulties and, yes and, and and it is great for you know older kids but even starting at seven or eight i think that would be great for those kids or, or maybe even earlier i don't know but then earlier than that um that program called fast forward yeah that also has aerobics aerobics that really is maybe i need kids. some of those <laughs> yeah I really do the little exercise <laughs> but yeah that's a great one for for younger kids i think that one thing that i am taking out of this whole conversation mia um and I want to go back because it's one of the very first things that she said is it is so important to wait kids out. Mm -hmm. I think oftentimes we forget that they are people. They mm -hmm. have their own thoughts and feelings. Mm -hmm. And if we answer for them all the time, we are doing more of an injustice to them 
at the end of the day. Absolutely. They have to be able to answer mm. for themselves. They're not going to go off to college, you know, taking an exam and with us over their shoulder going, the answer's A, yeah. when they should be saying it themselves. Yes. So I love the fact that we need to wait them out mm -hmm. and we also need to... Um, Physically oh, yes. let them see mm -hmm. us. Go right. ahead and, and, and okay. touch so on that too, another, because that's important. Right. Another thing that is such a great tip for parents is when your child is talking to you and they're looking someplace else, don't answer them. Uh, wait until they kind of try to figure out why mom isn't answering. They look for you. And they will. And then respond. Oh, I like that you're looking at me. Now I'm going to tell you um, you're, you know, your packages in the car or whatever it was. Um, yes. Seeing those lips and, and especially if you have an auditory processing uh, difficulty or challenge, seeing those lips saying and reinforcing is mm -hmm. almost as like that app reading and seeing right. those words and that pronunciation and that translation, seeing mm -hmm. it can help to right. form those files, yes. like you say, yes. putting that sandwich in a hey, file, the pickle in the sandwich. Yes, <laughs> that visual for P-I-C-K-L-E is then seeing pickle. That that connection is just not always easy to make. Right. We have to reinforce that. But isn't it interesting if you look at your child and if you feel like they are not understanding people as well during COVID when they're wearing the masks, <gasps> it's like, okay, they're probably reading lips and I cannot how tell. important it is to get them to realize that so they do look at everybody. Uh, not for nothing, during COVID, I noticed how hard it was for me to understand right. people without seeing their lips. Mm -hmm. um, number one, I couldn't see their lips move. Number two, the mask also had a layer of, well, now the sound is distorted yes, and total. I can't really hear you yes. like that. It was the worst in restaurants yes. because it's already loud and mm -hmm. there's too many things going on. Mm -hmm. And so then you add that layer and that's mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. So much harder for our kids. Too. Yeah. Now that the mask mandates are pretty much not uh, mm -hmm. with us anymore, mm -hmm. then that should, that part should go away, but we mm -hmm. should still be concentrating on looking at the lips, Looking at them, having that eye contact is so important. Mm -hmm. um, and we know that it's difficult for some children to have that eye contact, mm -hmm. but it's important to make that eye contact, have them look at your mm -hmm. uh, face and your lips and wait for mm -hmm. that answer. Yes. Wait them out. Mm -hmm. That's a big yes. It's hard to do. It's it so is. hard. So I find myself to have really grown a lot of patience over the last uh, many years because I've had to. Mia, I've I, always been impatient. Impa and well, and I think we're more impatient with our own children than we are with someone else's. Yeah, so, so it's true. easier to, yeah. it's easier said than done in some respects. Yes. But I want to thank you. Thank my you. first guest, yeah. one of my dearest friends of my life, always will be my friend mm. in my orbit. I'm so yes. happy that you're here, Miss mm. um, Mia Anderton. And remember, as we live life with the spectrum, the journey is about more than me, more than Mia. Mm -hmm. It's about you too. Mm -hmm. It's about people that you work with that are on the spectrum. It's about people you live with that are on the spectrum. It's people that you see at a gas station that may need a little extra help. And remembering that during the month of autism, it's being different, not less. And, and being autistic, there is so much so many gifts that they have. There's so many gifts right. that they have that mm -hmm. I think people just don't take the time to mm -hmm. to learn or mm -hmm. to dig through right. and to and to figure mm -hmm. that all out. That's so true. remember, uh, comment, share, like. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to know about, what you don't want to know about. Ask the questions that uh, may be hard to ask, but we'll get there and we'll answer them together. And you can do that by commenting below, DMing me through social media. Find me, Gina Cavalli. Find me, um, and my email is ginamariefm at gmail.com. And as we continue to live life on the spectrum, I'm so glad that I live life with you Thanks, in this too. world. Yeah, me too. I appreciate My pleasure. That. Thanks, Gina. Thank you. See you again. Bye.